Alright, I got my buddy Andy's uh, amp right here. I don't know what's up with those screws right there, but those screws are not going back in this box. I hate flathead screws. They are not the funnest things in the world. And I had a problem getting a couple of them out. Looks like uh, a couple of these nut certs have been stripped or ain't even here no more. And I took some of these screws out. I heard something falling into the box. Yep. Yep, there's a nut cert just sitting right down in there in that hole. You see it? Let's see if I can't get another one. As you can see, there's no nut cert right there in that bottom. Um, when I took two of the screws out, I heard some stuff jingling in the box when I took it out. There's that nut set right there. Big glob of solder. Let's see what we got here. Nut shirt, got a big glob of solder. Oh boy, let's see what we got here. Alright, looks like this is a fat boy build. Looks like somebody has took the front off. <sighs> fat boys and X forces look so similar. If you don't know what you're looking for. If it was in a fat X force box I'd call it an X-Force build but I believe it's a fat boy now I don't know what the heck is up with this my guess is somehow some moisture got in this case and you can see somebody has drilled a hole so that relay can have some air uh, I don't like that no, actually there's been two holes drilled in it but no uh, this right here is loose the preamps are loose um basically from what i'm understanding yes yeah, this is a two by four all right I, I believe you put the hgs in yourself yeah. huh. Get a little heavy on the solder there. I think what the main problem, brother, is your iron's not hot enough the way it looks like. The way the solder's globbed on there. I can tell you, you used to either some real high flux solder or you used a lot of flux to try to get it to spread, which was a good idea. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to suck some of that solder up and reflow it for you. There's the other one. See if I can't put them back on and get one right there. And one out there in the front. So I give a little bit better view. I don't know what's going on with these feedback circuits though, brother. They've been pushed down. What if you didn't key this box up, dude? Look at this. Yeah. This is a good little tester to make, stuff, make sure stuff is soldered good. Look at this, they're bent down. I don't understand why that is. All of them are. Something in there in this. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to suck a lot of that solder up and reflow it. not a good indication whenever you see power wire like this right here you see a good size glob of solder but the solder is not flowed on top down it, it almost appears like somebody put a glob of solder and just push this down in it a lot of times this is due to using wire this aluminum clad now I don't know what type of wire this is 
Let's see, it says four gauge power wire, which tells me nothing. So I don't know if this is aluminum clad wire or if or if uh, I don't know maybe somebody just didn't have a real hot iron when they were putting it in but I'm gonna have to double check that because that's not a good solid ground connection I would have put this ground wire right here probably back here looks like that may have been where looks like that may have been where something one was and a little small eight gauge this is some big thick four gauge definitely overkill but hey there's nothing wrong with overkill I mean I'm not downing anybody for putting their ground wire in the middle of the box there's definitely nothing wrong with that I mean yeah it's down right here by the pills um, I just like putting mine back here in the back a short run the whole boards ground plane at that point but uh other than that I can tell somebody put these feedback circuits in after the fact and uh so yeah I'm gonna uh check each section by itself I may remove those and put some half inches on there it's not that big of a deal these right here is not that big of a deal either these actually are probably silver dip mic there are some silver dip micas out there that look like this i can't tell if it's ceramic disc or silver dip micas but that's probably fine what we got we got a 120 on the output that's great we got a what we got right here this is this is gonna be wrong I guarantee you let's see the camera better what is that what is that is that a 100 oh my god yeah that's uh, definitely definitely not right yeah I'm not retuning this over I'm just gonna break it up return it so i'm gonna get to work on it man get this thing up and rolling for you i ain't a big fan of two by fours i've actually only built one myself uh there again while i'm thinking about that so this is usually kind of my style i like to do this sometimes a lot of times you'll see this section actually flipped so that the variable can run straight into and then you'll have a this way just to be different i built a lot of my one by fours like this and i'll just come out like you see here um i'm not a big fan of how long that is it should have been brought to right here and then come up uh in the world somebody has put a hundred ohm resistor right here that is a big no-no. That resistor is going to fry quickly. Quickly. That needs to be took off. There needs to be a 47 to a 68 here. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with putting 100 if that's what somebody wants. But, uh... I actually would prefer about 100, man, to back, to back this thing down real good. It really needs a... Two by fours really just need uh, a good uh, T circuit attenuator in them. I wish I had some floating around. Now, of course, I can make some with some resistors, but uh, it's good to try to make a T circuit attenuator just with the variable. And technically, that's kind of in a sense what you're seeing right here, anyway. This right here is a series. All right. Here's the shunt right here. Then you got another series right here. So it's being fed right there in the middle. I'd have to draw that out sometime, but I think it's probably just an L circuit. But anyway. Yeah, so that's kind of unique there. If this is a fat boy amp like I'm thinking it is, or there again, it may not be a fat boy amp actually. It 
just kind of, this may just be an amp somebody has built in an ICA case. That's probably where I'm leaning to. I don't normally see Fat Boy doing their layouts like this. So I'll probably rephrase that to a uh, homebrew somebody put together. Yeah. That 100 is probably going to be too big. It's definitely not big enough in wattage. That thing's going to fry quick. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. We'll stop blabbing my knees out. I'm glad I saw this, brother. I guess you can say this is why you sent this to me. Let's see if I can line this up real good. Take a look down these pills. All right, let me turn it around. Take a look right down these pills. That's basically, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And that's not a very rigorous test. Think. But if you have a system that acts in every way like a human being, then people, whether it's thinking or not, are going to accept it as a thinking machine. You well, see what I'm saying? But it's a thought. This pill down here at the end is not sitting. flat on the heat sink. It is hyped up. You got to using this amp like this, that pill right there would go out fairly quickly. And uh, that also scares me. See, so the HGs are a tad bit bigger, the heat sink on them. So a lot of these older boxes like this, we actually have to take the board out and make the hole a little bigger now it appears you got the rest well, of these in fine this one here is hiked up on something it could be anything there could be a little a little one of them old little solder boogers you don't don't mount one of them little solder balls one of them little solder boogers there could be a little piece of solder on the bottom but i'm glad i saw it now i'm gonna have to remove this pill i hate removing the hd if i don't have to, but you don't know, have to. <laughs> I just want to point that out in the video, but always make sure these uh, pills are sitting completely flat. And it looks like you've used a silver plated, not plated, a uh, type of uh, compound with silver in it, which is, is okay with this. It's not okay to use with. Uh, other type of electronics you know, to build a capacitive build up or short things out in different situations but it's going to get messy but all right i'm going to move that up flatten it out and uh i've already got this removed i already got everything cleaned up you can see and i reflowed the solder as best as i could i didn't want to leave the hot the heat on you don't want to leave the heat heat on these hcs as much longer as you is you have to, you know, they're not as durable as Toshiba's physically. So you kind of want to get in and get out. So I'm going to tune this four pill and then this one pill. I'm going to unhook that 100 ohm resistor too. All right, be back. Well, there's the first time for everything, brother. Well, I got that transistor put in. Uh, I had to make the hole bigger. And it took me about an hour. An hour honestly probably about an hour and a half just to do that one thing yeah. i tell you what but bud we got something pretty wild going on here man the ssb switch is broke and somehow for one thing it's hooked up wrong i don't quite understand why somebody do this you see the led it's hooked up so that led comes on when the sideband is turned off and when the sideband is turned on the LED turns off well anyway I hooked this uh, bad boy up man I should always check for dead shorts before I hook something up I hooked it up and was flipping the switches man and the dang power supply trip check this out alright Got a dead short. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start flipping the. Uh, 
I'm gonna start flipping the switch. See? The switch has literally somehow or another, I've never seen a micro switch do this. Internally, it, it, one of the leads is shorted to the to the um, the shaft, right ground into the case. Wow. So yeah, I'm gonna have to replace that. And I, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do this either. They've got the uh, switches set up so if you turn them down, down is on. Um, but you know, to each his own, man. It's all preference. Minerals, and then all right, just want to point that one out. All right, it's amazing what you can just do with this simple utensil here. Utensil tool. <laughs> Got this bad boy all tuned up for you, bud. Two pills working good. Doing about 250 watts peak out of, peak out of two pill section. Um, went ahead and tuned the. Uh, the input, now yeah, that was way wrong capacitor. That was not the right capacitor. Here's your input. This, this right here is just a four fill section. I got a leader line hooked up. I got the relay engaged. Let's say you tune individual section. Input, do look at that, do beautiful. Peak, 500 watts low, do right there at 500. And that's what four pills is supposed to do with my bench radio. If I can't get them to do at least 450 to 500, then something's wrong. So, all right, man, looks like all my uh, work up to this point has been satisfactory. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing mic'd in, and we should be uh, almost done after I tidy up a couple of small things. Hopefully, you learned a little bit from this, bud. I, I did try to make sure to explain a little bit more with stuff because i know this is uh something you did or attempting to do for yourself and one thing i do need to point out i think the solder that you were using may have not been the right kind you really need to use this is what i use you don't have to this is very expensive solder um, you can buy some solder up at uh fat boys uh ica manufacturing it's just as good uh, 60 40 60 40 rosin core dot zero three one is uh is what i use mostly and i like the thicker stuff too for bigger projects anyway yeah somebody else built this uh as you can see they got the transformer soldered straight down to the to the heat sink there Heat sink to the hot buzz. I'm tired, man. I've been up since six, working on this bench since six. Uh, no, six forty-five. Talk to my boys on the OE Peter Ray. Got to work about nine. That's nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One. Took a break for thirty minutes and eight. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's ten hours. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one. It's fifteen hours I put in a day. Now it's two o'clock. It's sixteen. God, I didn't re realize I had put that much work in today. And I normally just try to work about fourteen hours, but sometimes it overlaps. We'll be back. All right, brother. I was all done. About to make the video showing the output. Even went to the uh, trouble of doing some work and getting me a little uh, 100 amp supply uh, hooked up over here. The uh, little 13.8 volt supply. It's a very expensive power supply right there. They're using the uh, hospitals and stuff. It's an extra supply. It's got 520 amp uh, outputs on it. But anyway, I was just keying up just to see the input reflect flowing through the box. And I was seeing full, uh, full blown reflect coming back to me. And uh, so the whole time I just didn't notice it yet because I hadn't checked the uh, pass through. But uh, this relay is shot, man. <laughs> Basically, what's going on is, as you can see, uh, here's your continuity meter. Yeah. 
That's what I hate about just having two hands. All right, you hear that? All right, when the box is resting like this, you should have continuity right here. No continuity. This means you wouldn't have any receive. Now I checked the continuity and it is uh, making it from when the relay actuates, it is making it, it is hooking up to both uh, input and output of the amp. So those part of the poles are working. It's just the common poles are not. So you wouldn't have receive. So yep, I'm going to have to change your relay, brother. Those are always fun to do. Let's see how quick I can do it. I'm going to time myself. I'll be back. Here, like a, here, like a, here's how old BBI does it. Hold on, I gotta press stop real quick so I don't have to do no editing. I've seen old BBI do this before. <laughs> I like it when he does it. New relay. That was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> oh boy. Now I see what the problem was. As soon as I saw that LED, I knew what time it was. I bought about 100 of these relays. These LY2N-J Omrons. Because for one thing, they were cheap. They're about a dollar fifty for a hundred of them. Uh, well, yeah, a hundred of them. And I thought I kind of liked the little uh, LED idea. So I actually got in here and changed these LEDs out to blue, whatever color the amp was going to be. Uh, put a uh, very very uh, low ohm resistor to get it as bright as possible So the uh, so the relay would light up There's something extra, you know, and uh, After a, after a little while I started getting calls one after another My receive my relay sticking my relay sticking my receives not coming back my relay sticking after the fifth or sixth amplifier that I had to replace the relays out of, I went ahead and took, well, how many was it? At first, I tried to get my money back, which didn't work. I uh, took, I believe, I think I gave like 20 of them away and the rest of them, I literally threw in the trash. Like, they really, really upset me. <laughs> that was really getting on my nerves. And, and also, uh, I... I, I would probably guesstimate I built about 30 to 35 amps using those because I was really pushing them out back then and um, still to this day I'll get an amp pop up with one of, the, one of them in it that I did um, I would say probably at least 20 plus have already had to be replaced but anyway so kind of glad that I noticed that kind of glad it wasn't working and I let it go and you had problems with it later so I went ahead and uh, put you the, re the 10 amp relays I'm, I use now and uh, I learned this little trick from old uh, buddy stick man man god rest his soul he always did his relays like this he'd take the cover off of them though I couldn't do that with this one because you got a preamp sitting on top, but I went ahead and just drilled some holes right there. And basically what this does is it takes a little length of uh, of your wire out of the equation. You no longer have that. It takes a little length of the wire out of the equation when there's really no reason to have to solder wire uh, right there because you already have wire in the relay. And uh, also, it doesn't make it as crowded in, in, in front. The only uh, thing about it, though, is you, you, you do have to 
run your cap capacitor to the input SO, you know, to get your RF signal for the key in circuit, which uh, is no big deal. So anyway, I got that uh, back on there for you, man. And yeah, this, this thing was, goodness gracious, look at this. I could tell it was kind of weak sounding when it would flip. It didn't take much for that right there to pop off. And uh, it may be hard to see, but look in here. I don't say nothing about my nasty fingernails, man. I've been working all day. See up in there? See that whiteness? Yeah, water got in there. Well, see, the problem with these, here's the problem with them, okay? This is the issue with them. All right. You see that nipple on this armature right here? I call it a nipple right there. The issue is, is that will actually come separated from the car copper right here. It will become separated to where you can literally spin it. So at that point, it ain't even hardly making a good connection to this copper armature right here. Okay, and that's the problem. So, like the problem with my personal amp back then is I'd key, unkey, and my receive wouldn't come back. And I'd key real quick again and it'd come back. Just because sometimes it'd make a connection, sometimes it wouldn't. So I've I've even tried to get in there and tried to uh, try to solder them a little bit. You know, you know, I could be wrong. It's either that on this armature, or it's either right this on the top. It's one of the two. I think it may be this one on the top. Whichever one it is, it spins around. And I tried to get in here and solder it, and that don't work. But these right here are the same size, same, close to the same price, and they work absolutely great. So, uh, so anyway, I got all that done, man, and uh, got it hooked up to this supply right here. It's only 13.8 volts. And I, I did notice that it wasn't doing a whole lot of power. And I had to personally put about three watt dead key in it just to get it to, uh, dead key how much was it i think about three watts i think i had to put about three three and a half watts just to get it to dead key about 100 or 80 to 100 and uh for a two by four that's uh so the problem was this resistor is just a little a little too big you know every two by four turns out a little different um like for example, this 680 right here. Some people will lower the capacitance on the output transformer like this to, to try to back the amplifier down a bit. You could uh, easily put a thousand on there and it will ramp it up. But hey, I'm not a big fan of two by fours because of how many I've had to repair. And I've, I've talked to a lot of guys into converting them to one by fours. You know, I can get just the same output out of one by four as a two by four. The problem is it's so easy, so easy to overdrive them. So uh, I'm kind of glad the two pill section in this box isn't hot. It isn't real hot with no, with no resistance right on it at all. It's only doing about, I want to say, if I remember correctly, 150 watts or so. Or was it? Yeah, I think it was like 150, maybe 200. I can't remember now, it was yesterday. But it wasn't super, super hot like some two-pill drivers in the past. So. But anyway, first what we're going to do, like I said, this supply is just a 13.8 volt supply. And I got this from a, uh, a ham operator. And uh, the bolts he put on here is not quite big enough. He had this supply. He had about 10 of them, man. I, I, I told him I need one more. <laughs> It'd be nice to have one more. I have me a 200 amp supply to use. But the uh, the, the, the uh, bolts he used are, are pretty small. Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to put some bigger bolts in it. I added that cap in there myself just for extra stability. That, um, that ring holder was already there. So I went ahead and just added it. And uh, basically, 
what a lot of people use these for were, were flat out lighting. They used it for lighting. You, you have 520 amp modules here, okay? Now there's another board that mounted, I think it mounted on this other side, or this side, I can't remember. There was another board, and what it was was a regulating board. Actually, yeah, I'll show it to you. In case anybody's interested. Boy, take a look at that variac right there. Woohoo! I can't wait to play around with that. Um, here it is. This is what was in it. Yeah, that's a lot of good usable hardware right there for sure. That is a lot of little heat sinks that will probably last me to the rest of my days. <laughs> but, uh, as you can see here, We've got some F14 and 5 ls I believe those are past transistors, if I remember correctly. That's the way it plugs up. Um, but basically, this was in there. And basically, what you're looking at is each individual past transistor is a different 12 volt output. So the way this was, this was put together to feed. Yeah, so there's an LM317 right there. Thought about playing around with this module a little bit. So there's the main regulator. And these four right here are different. But anyway, so there's basically one regulator in there somehow. Uh, they're using all these as pass transistors somehow to individually give many, many, many 12 volt outputs, but limit them to a small amperage. Because if you look right here, there's where the plugs were that uh, you can plug your wires into. So, yeah. so anyway, back to what we're doing. I'm going to hit it with that, and then I'm going, after that, I'm going to, uh, uh, that, that, that little servo supply, it's cutting that off instantly now that I've gotten done with everything. Then I'm going to hook it up to the old 100 amp under reg, and I'm just going to do a quick burp. That's all I'm going to do. Just a quick burp. Uh, ideally, I would like to have a supply back here that's uh, sitting at about 15 volts for my HGs. Uh, when I finally do build me one, I'm gonna go ahead and just build me a uh, uh, one with uh, with variable voltage on it for, for my particular reasons. So on my Toshiba boxes, I can turn the voltage up a bit and on the HGs, I can turn it down a bit. So uh, yeah, so at 13.8, it's dropping to about 13.6, I believe. It's low voltage, so you're not gonna get full output. But anyway, let's go ahead and turn her on. All right, side bend delay works fine. I already checked that out. All right, so, 1,000 watt slug. Peak, 1,000 watt slug RMS. So here's what we're getting out of it now. Bottom scale, do right there about 700 watts. Do about 200 birds. So yeah, it's not a whole lot of power, but there again, I'm uh, only driving it with the bench radio right now, which ain't a whole lot. I'm putting about three RMS into it, and it's on 13.8 volts. One of my connections must have come undone. Oh, no, I'm on AC. 
So yeah, and just for the fun of it. Plus this clip, I know I'm losing a little bit. I've just got it clipped on there. Nine amps on a dead key. Go. That's maximum on that reading. Let me go down. Go. So it's only pulling about 40 amps right now. So yeah, it's <laughs> it's nowhere near uh, what it can be. That's for sure. So I'll be right back, man. We're gonna hook her up on a supply where it can get all that it wants. And I may or may not hook the hot radio up on it. I don't like playing around with these brand new HGs like that, man, and lowering the HFE. By the time it gets to the customer, the HFE's half of what it was but brand new. I ain't into all that, man. No, I'm just kidding. I'm about to snap. All right, brother. I got the old unreg supply hooked up. My buddy, Mr. Real Deal, built that joker for me. Just a real deal out of the chat chopping hard your DC power. I think he got out of building supplies, man. I hate that. So anyway, we're floating at 18. I've actually got it on the medium tap. So uh this is just the medium tap. It's dropping to an acceptable voltage of about 14. <laughs> this is show you the difference of the raw power that this, this supply can give you, man. That's why I really want to play around and really learn how to regulate these iron core supplies. But by the way, if there's anybody watching this, I ain't afraid to ask help when I need it. If there's anybody watching this that actually has regulated iron core supplies, I have some 300 amp Toshiba IGBTs. Um, oh, those integrated gate bipolar transistors, BJ, let's see, BJ, DJ. IGBTs, whatever. But anyway, I have some of those, and I absolutely don't know how to drive them. I think I got to use a switch motor regulator of some sort. I've got a uh, Fat Boy Motor Mall that's using those, but of course he's got the uh, parts uh, rubbed off. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that would be sweet. And, uh, you know, I really don't want to have to use pass transistors. I would hate to have to sit there and, you know, throw a heck of a lot of pass transistors on, uh, you know, 10 amp pass transistors. I'd really like to use the IGBT. If anybody's ever watching this right here and they've ever actually built and know 100% how to build and regulate iron core supplies, I've got a whole closet full of them and I would love to get rid of them by building some regulated supplies. I'm just, uh, I love iron core supplies, but I can like be regulated. So anyway, we're on 18 volt float. We're going to drop down to about 14, 14 one. This is how much more we're going to be getting out of it. Go thousand watts. RMS. Go a little bit over 200. Scared the heck out of me, man. Actually, should be doing a tad bit more than that, but like I said, we're dropping. Ooh, 14 volts. All right. I'm going to flip the switch and give it all it really wants, and we're just going to quick, quick key it. 21. This is just a bench radio now. Now, y'all keep in mind, I'm not using a 4-watt RMS radio anymore. I'm using a 3-watt radio, so it's not going to do a lot of RMS. I'm not putting the whole new RMS into it. All right, we won't even look at the peak. I know that's going to hit bang the scale. We'll look at the RMS. So that's about 300 bird. Yeah, see? Uh-uh. 16 volts, I ain't doing it. Uh, all right. 
If I hook the uh, hot hot radio up to it, the old stick man. I'll be right back. Ed. All right, I'm not gonna look at the meter. I'm just gonna I'm gonna look at the voltage because I'm just kind of curious what the uh, voltage is gonna drop to. This is the hot radio. Do yeah, 15. 14, 9, 15, so it's even pulling that down much. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't see what it did. I'm probably guessing it's at least 400 bird. I'll watch the video. I just don't want to key this thing any more than I have to. But anyway, uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, we're able to get a kilowatt out of it, no problem. And it's, like I said, since this two pill's not super hot, you technically could take this 22 ohm resistor off and put a 4.7 or or whatever if you wanted to but i don't suggest it like i said it's real easy to blow these boxes just run it the way it is you know and and to be honest with you if you feel like you really do want to back it down some more you can throw you a 33 ohm resistor right there 47 whatever you want you can go higher with it it's not going to affect the SWR a whole lot. The input reflect is uh, great on this amp. Uh, did I even show the input reflect? <sighs> Shoot. You know what? I'd have to hook the other supply up and everything. I don't know if I did or not. I can't remember. But the uh, input reflect is absolutely great. It's, it's less than a quarter of a watt input. Hey, just trust me on it. <laughs> I'm pretty good about showing the input reflect on everything else. I'll be right back. I'll show it to you, man. I ain't going to leave that up. I can hear the people now. Oh, he ain't showing it because the input reflects probably probably 8 watts, man. I, I know the input reflects probably 30 watts. <laughs> All right. This is your input reflect. Like I said, it is absolutely beautiful. No, and I'll be honest with you. Sometimes that's a little rough uh, doing on a two by four. Now, yeah, take in mind this resistor is uh, is uh, soaking up a little bit of that reflect where you can't see it on the meter. But without the resistor, it was very, very, very low anyway. So that is a very, very good input tone. You ain't got to worry about no output coming back in your radio or nothing like that. No. show y'all go oh, right there about three watts a little bit under a watt dead key five watts slug it's just my radio oh, a little bit over three watts oh man I did a lot more work on that than I anticipated man uh I believe I pointed everything out that I had to do on this joker. Um, so there you go, brother. Thanks for hanging in there with me. You can tell right there, that's where they had the ground before. That's my guess. But uh, she's ready to roll, bro. Just don't run the heck out of her, man. She'll last you. So all I got to do now is hook this fan up. Just by looking at this fan, I'm going to take a wild guess it's not a powerful fan at all. I, uh, if that's so, I suggest you uh, get you a little faster fan, which I know you can handle all that on your own, man. You, you're already doing some starting to work on these boxes and stuff. Appreciate you, Mr. Ortiz. Mr. Andy. Your homeboy. The gatekeeper. Just built another street. Just uh, got done repairing another street sleeper, street sweeper. <laughs> I'm going, y'all, man. I'm so tired. I'm stirring my goddamn words. I'm out of here, y'all. Do hey, like, 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 like us millennial these days say. Deuces, my friends. Uh, you know what? I totally forgot. I got two. Uh, nut certs here that I need to uh, fix before I can uh, 
Well, I'm calling it a night right now, but yeah. And for some reason, somebody didn't put screws. I just noticed right here and right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some screws right there for you. I don't like to leave stuff undone and halfway finished and all that kind of stuff. You just get through here and make sure I ain't got no little solder pieces uh, hanging out anywhere. I cleaned it pretty good. As you can see, there's not really no flux left. But, uh, yeah, I need to do that. I went ahead and, uh, you know, they've rolled them up this right here for a ground for the fan. And you may have painted this, but I went ahead and roughed that up uh, so that I make a good connection when you put the uh, lid on for the fans, for the fan. So, yeah. I don't think I'm going to tackle this tonight. I need to get in the house. But, uh, I'll put, uh, I will attempt to put two nut certs on there. Now, I don't know if the uh, hole's been enlarged to where that's not going to work or not. We will have to wait and see, but I will, I will do my best. And, uh, and if I don't come back, it means I didn't do it. <laughs> All right, man. Yes, sir. Anybody ever wonder how these nut certs are put on? I remember for many years, I guess about nine years, I always thought it was some special uh, tool or machine you had to do to put these things on. It always uh, mesmerized me how they are, how they're even on. I know a guy named Mr. Clean. He showed me, and I about went nuts when he showed me how easy it was. Because I had a whole bag of about 100 or 200 of them that I had got some somewhere, and I just kind of been keeping them. I came close to throwing them away. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we're putting this one on now. I like to use an Allen head, number six. I like to use two washers. And, uh, that's all you do, man. You make sure you hold the proper size and uh, you put it on there and you just uh, screw that joker in. And screw it in real good and hard. And then unscrew your screw. And she's done. About got this one done now. Dirt cert repaired. Same exact ones that was on here too. Here's the bad one. Basically, these will get knocked out by people putting in screws, uh, cockeyed and stuff, and and uh, putting stress on them. Why don't you put your screw in? Uh, also using um, power drills. And uh, there's nothing wrong with using a power drill whatsoever. Just put your tensioner on. Uh, Super low. You see, I'm sitting there pulling at it. It ain't going nowhere. All right, let's get the top on. I'm done now for show. Like those millennials these days say, deuces, my friends. This is one of those like two dollar fans off eBay. If I was you, brother, I would go ahead and get get a good fan and replace it. My personal opinion. I need to get me some more fans, man. That's my personal opinion, man. Ain't got a lot of airflow at all coming out the back, so I'd do that if I was you. Um. I guess I could, we could order one, but I know that'd be a real simple job for you. But anyway, I'm going for sure now. I promise I will not be back. Get in putting these screws. The heck with those screws. 
Got you some new stainless steels here, pal. I'm gone. Bye-bye.